Hi there, Mark Holzer here, a colleague of Tim Herman's at 3D Molecular Designs. In an earlier video, Tim talked a little bit about coronavirus, uh, where it came from, originally thought to come from bats and then maybe through a host species made its way to humans, uh, as well as what the origin of its name is and a little bit about its structure. In this video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the virus's structure, and I'm going to be using a neat little model that we've made of the coronavirus. So the first feature you may kind of notice about this coronavirus is its overall shape. It's pretty much a sphere or a ball. Um, coronavirus, like the flu virus, is what's called an envelope virus. Um, and that's essentially because at its core, all an enveloped virus is, is a membrane, a ball or a sphere of membrane, shown in yellow in this model. But there's also some proteins on the outside of this membrane, and that's what all these pink, and even if we look closer, some white and some cyan-colored pieces are. The coronavirus is surrounded primarily by a protein called the spike protein. That's the magenta protein that we show embedded into and covering the surface of this uh, phospholipid or lipid membrane sphere. This spike protein, as we'll be discussing in some videos down the line, is incredibly crucial to a coronavirus. It essentially allows the virus to not only dock onto a surface of a host cell, but then gain entry into that host cell. And you can kind of see that these spike proteins cover the entire surface, the entire spherical surface of a coronavirus, so that no matter which way it encounters the cell, it has one or two or three of these spike proteins in the right position to interact with that host cell membrane. So we've got a spherical membrane, shown in yellow, surrounded on the outside by all these different spike proteins, shown in magenta. But probably the most important part of a virus is actually what's inside. So we designed this model to be able to open up, and so I can essentially remove half of it and let us look inside. And what we have here is the viral genome. This is actually a single strand plus strand of RNA. And if we stretch it all out, we can see that this model's representation of the RNA is one long strand. This is the key important genetic material that the virus is trying to inject into a host cell. It's essentially the blueprints that are needed to create more viruses. And so once this virus docks on a host cell, gets entry into that cell, it can inject its genome, hijacking the machinery of that host cell and using it to make more viruses. Since I've now opened this virus up, I've removed half of it, let's take a little closer look at some of these proteins that are uh, involved in or embedded into this membrane. One thing you might notice is that the spike protein doesn't just sit on the outside of the membrane, it's actually embedded into the membrane. And so the membrane itself holds this spike protein steady, doesn't let it float away completely from the virus. It's also another little protein, it's this white guy. This is actually called the M protein, short for membrane protein. And these are organized in a very ordered way around the virus membrane, specifically because they interact with the genetic payload of this virus. They help structure it and organize it inside of the virus so that it stays stable and is easy to transport. Technically, there's another protein uh, called the N protein for nucleocapsid protein that we don't represent at all. It's essentially a protein that interacts with the RNA and gives it further structure. This N protein then interacts further with the M proteins in the viral membrane, again, to keep this genetic payload organized and contained within the virus envelope. And last but not least, this model uh, calls out one other little important feature of this coronavirus structure. And you'll see that there are two of these spike proteins that have a slightly different color. We have a little bit of blue on them. That's actually to key in to how those two spike proteins might be involved in binding to the host cell membrane. So what I have here is essentially a little section of host cell membrane. And there's one key protein highlighted in green. This is called the ACE2 receptor. It's a naturally occurring protein that's on the exterior of our cells. And this is actually the target of the coronavirus spike protein. When a coronavirus gets close to an ACE2 receptor, 
it snaps on and binds to it. In fact, there's a very specific part of the spike protein called the receptor binding domain that we'll be talking about in a bit more detail in a future video. As you explore the rest of the resources on this webpage, um, we will be diving again into more detail about the spike protein, about the genetic payload that's inside this coronavirus, and exactly how it functions once it's gotten into your host cell. So, enjoy!